video i am going to explain 3 to 1 principle of location so in order to explain the 3 to 1 principle we have to consider here one example so here we have one object that is workpiece so when we can say that the workpiece is kept in a space then that workpiece or that object has 12 degree of freedom 12 degree of freedom and we have to restrict, restrict this 12 degree of freedom in order to achieve the machining processes so how it can be achieved I am going to explain in this video so here we have to consider one workpiece which is kept inside this space when we kept this object in a space then we have here three coordinate system first one is x axis second one is y and third one is z axis so here first we will consider uh, about the x axis so this object can translate or move along the x axis again we have here two positive x axis and negative x axis so here this object can translate or move along the positive x axis and along the negative x axis again here this object can rotate along the x axis in clockwise manner as well as in anti clockwise manner so here we have total 4 degree of freedom out of that two are translatory means first one is along the positive x axis second one is along the negative x axis remaining two one in clockwise along the x axis and in anti clockwise along the x axis so we have here total 4 degree of freedom when we consider in the direction of x axis similarly for if we consider y axis then again for y axis it has 4 degree of freedom it has 4 degree of freedom if we consider first there are two translatory uh, motion or it can move in translatory in negative y axis as well as in positive y axis and it can rotate in clockwise manner along the y axis as well as in anti clockwise along the y axis so here we get 4 degree of freedom over the y axis if we consider z axis then again for z axis we get here 4 degree of freedom or this object can move in 4 direction so here we get 4 degree of freedom so out of that 2 are translatory means it can move in positive z direction as well as it can move in negative z direction or it can translate in negative as well as in positive direction along this it can rotate in clockwise and anti-clockwise along the z axis so here again we get 4 degree of freedom so if we add this 4 uh, degree of freedom plus this 4, 4 degree of freedom and this 4 degree of freedom we get total 12 degree of freedom we get here that means this body this free body has 12 degree of freedom 12 degree of freedom if now we are consider this body as a workpiece and we have to perform a machining operation over the this uh, workpiece so for machine any machining over this workpiece we need to restrict all the 12 degree of freedom we need to uh, restrict here 12 degree of freedom so uh, for restriction of 12 degree of freedom we have to use here 3 to 1 principle we have to use here 3 to 1 principle so let us discuss about 3 to 1 principle what is meant by 3 to 1 so 3 means what in bottom plane we have three pins, first, second and third, that pins are supporting pins. Next, in this plane we have two locating pins and in this plane we have one locating pin. So first of all, we will consider here uh, bottom plane on which we have three locating pins. So uh, this is our front view of this diagram, this is top view and this is side view. So here, in bottom plane we have three locating pins so this is first this is first locating pin this one is second locating pin and this one is third locating pin so because of these three locating pins first this object cannot move in downward direction along the z axis so first this motion is restricted along the negative negative z axis again because of these three 
locating pins this object cannot move in positive in clockwise x axis direction as well as in anti clockwise x direction so here again two um, degree of freedom can be restricted because of these three pins again because of these three pins it this object cannot move in along the clockwise as well as along the anti clockwise y direction so here total 5 degree of freedom can be restricted by using this three pins so by introducing these three pins here total 5 degree of freedom can be restricted first one is it cannot translate or move along the negative z axis then it cannot move in clockwise as well as in anti clockwise along the x axis again it cannot move along the y axis in clockwise as well as in anti clockwise direction so if we add this 2 plus this 2 and this one is 1 so we get here five degree of freedom can be restricted by using these three pins then we consider here uh, these two pins that is second these two pins are installed in a plane which is perpendicular to the bottom plane so here we have two pins this one is fourth one and this one is fifth one so here we have 1 2 3 4 and 5 this is indicated over here in top view that is this is our fourth pin and this one indicate the fifth pin so here because of this fourth and fifth pin what will happen here again here three uh, degree of freedom three degree of freedom can be restricted so here we will see first because of this uh, two pins it cannot move in negative x direction it cannot move in negative x direction so it cannot translate in negative x direction as well as it cannot rotate along the z axis in clockwise as well as in anti clockwise direction so here because of introducing these two planes along this plane three degree of freedom three degree of freedom can be restricted so here three degree of freedom can be restricted by introducing these two pins along this planes so next one is we have one pin so here this one pin is located over the this plane and this plane is perpendicular to this bottom plane as well as this plane so here we have to install one pin over this work uh, over this plane so here because of this it cannot translate it cannot translate along the negative y axis it cannot move along the negative y axis so here total one degree of freedom can be restricted by using this one pin so if we add this all four degree of uh, all uh, degree of freedom then we get here total nine degree of freedom can be restricted by using this 3 to 1 principle so out of 12 degree of freedom here 9 degree of freedom can be restricted by using this 3 to 1 principle whatever remain we can see here so first one is uh, along the positive x direction second one is along the positive y direction and third one is along the positive z direction so here out of 12 degree of freedom 9 degree of freedom can be restricted by using this 3 to 1 principle still 3 degree of freedom present so here if we add more number of pin to restrict this 3 degree of freedom then what will happen here it is very difficult to load and unload the work piece so here the concept is that by using 3 to 1 principle the concept of 3 to 1 principle says we have to use minimum minimum number of pins we have to use minimum number of pins for restriction maximum number of degree of freedom to restrict the maximum degree of freedom so here the 3 to 1 principle says that we have to use the minimum number of pin 
for restriction of maximum degree of freedom. So here, by using this 3 to 1 principle or by using these 6 pins, we restrict here 9 degree of freedom and remaining 3 degree of freedom can be restricted by using the clamping device. So, here total when total 12 degree of freedom can be restricted by using this 3 to 1 principle as well as remaining 3 degree of freedom can be restricted by using the clamping device. Then after we can do the machining operation over the workpiece. So that is what about the 3 to 1 principle.